Well, friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Crystal with its latest updates, both in terms of firmware and software for the Pimax Experience, or Pimax Play, I think they want to call it now. And we'll be running it in DCS, because I just updated DCS. And DCS is one of the few games that supports quad views. Pimax now has its own runtime for OpenXR and quad views. So let's see how that works. Let's make sure we're set up for it. Pimax is hooked up. The base station, well, I don't have one, but the headset acts as its own base station with inside out tracking. The headset has lots of power. Let's go to device settings. Go to games, we'll go to DCS. We have render quality set to high. We have OpenXR quad views on and the Pimax OpenXR is on. I've got it set for quality. I never use smart smoothing. I've never really seen how it helps anything. <clears throat> At least it doesn't seem to for me. Hidden area mask, I'm not sure what that's doing. Maybe it Maybe it stops the computer from rendering things that can't actually be seen in the headset. But let's just leave that alone for now. And it looks like apply has already been done, so let's just start the game. And I, I really admire DCS. I think it's one of the one of the best uh, simulations out there. Excuse me. Getting old and tired. It's been a long day. Um, oh, nice aircraft carrier. All right. Why doesn't this want to launch? Should work. Oh, here it is. Okay, it's working. Let's close that. Get the little NVIDIA sign. I'm running an i9-900, which is an older CPU. It can't be clocked past 3.2 uh, megahertz. And it can't be uh, overclocked. But I do have 64 gigs of RAM, and I have an NVIDIA 3090 processor, which, of course, three years ago. Four years ago was state-of-the-art. Well, let's put the headset on and see how this looks. On my screen itself, it doesn't look that good. I've got it set to record just one eye in DCS. Now, oh, why am I not seeing it in my headset? What's going on here? Oh, that's why. The headset shut itself off to save power. So let's look straight ahead. I'll hit the 5 key on the numeric keypad to center things. And let's just check our settings. Go to VR. Mirror option. We're using DCS resolution. Crop to rectangle. Left eye only. Quad view. Track the eyes. Yes. Although, open XR layers detected. What? Warning. Open XR layers detected. Uh, well, I don't know. That might mean that I have OpenXR running in the background. Well, let's leave it alone and see how this works. Hopefully it doesn't compete with uh, Pimax OpenXR. Let's just try instant action. I'll try a dogfight in my Spitfire. <laughs> I love the Spitfire. It's, I think, the most beautiful airplane ever designed. But um, DCS, the Spitfire and DCS is incredibly weird to fly. It's very sensitive. I, I, I came to realize, though, that a lot of it has nothing to do with the simulation and everything to do with what I think I'm doing with the joystick. I think I have the joystick centered, and I don't. I've got slight back pressure on it, and it causes the airspeed to fall off, and of course, you can't feel the stick get sloppy in DCS the way you can in a real airplane. So you don't know that you're going too slow until suddenly you pull a little G and you're in a spin. And you go, oh, this sim's all wrong. Well, the sim isn't wrong. You just, the 
need to pay attention to your instruments more. Which, of course, is... I mean, it's vital to accurate flying, but it's not something you do all the time. i got to get that... There, that's better. I had to recenter the view. Now I'm probably going to get killed. Anyway, it doesn't matter if I uh, survive this mission as a pilot or not, because we're just looking at how smooth it is. And right now, it's smooth as glass. I mean, this is just... This is just absolutely smooth. It's like... It's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm going to just try and get a little bit closer to this guy. I'm trying to avoid pulling any back pressure on the stick at all accidentally. What I need is a force feedback stick that'll give me feedback when I'm applying any back pressure. Or maybe just stronger, stronger springs in this VKB. Get a little closer. Well, it looks like I stopped that guy's prop, so it should be alright. I don't want to spend any more for ammunition on him. Let's find the other guy, and I think he's around here somewhere. I hope that's him and not the guy I just shot, or his partner's going to shoot me right out of the sky. This is okay. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, see what I mean? I had a little bit of back pressure on the stick that I didn't know about. And uh, that I didn't realize I was doing. See, if I let go of the stick, it centers itself. When I put my hand on it, I naturally put a little bit of back pressure on it. And uh, that causes the speed to bleed off, as I said. And then I blame the sim for being too sensitive. Well, it's not. I just got to get the joystick right. That's on me. Oh, that was the guy that's already damaged. Here's the other one. Oh, yeah, and he was above me where I don't like him. I do not like when they have an altitude advantage on me. And the other guy is not going to be able to climb up to us, that's for sure. This guy appears to be looking to shoot down my wingman. Or is he engaging me? He's kind of doing a boom and zoom thing. Hopefully I'll be able to climb up to him. This is a Spit 9, which came as an awful surprise for the 190 pilots. Who were used to having it their own way against the Spitfire 5s, which were a lot slower and couldn't roll as well, so they could engage or disengage whenever they wanted. They could go vertical. They could roll into the fight, roll out of the fight, and the Spitz couldn't follow them. Amazing airplane, the 190. The Spit 9, when Johnny Johnson first got his Spit 9 and flew it, he said to uh, his friends, I'm going to live. I'm going to survive the war now. throttle here to stay behind him a little bit. Is he going to crash? Oh, looks like it. Okay, so I got lucky there. Not particularly skilled, just lucky. Now let's see if I can find a place to demonstrate a landing. Or in my case, a slightly controlled crash. <laughs> Alright, so far I'm really liking this new edition of DCS. I can't tell you what they changed other than uh, just smoothing it out, but I mean the cockpits always look great. Even the reflection off the the glass on the lenses is perfect, and the cockpits look used and everything works like it should. I mean, DCS is so amazing that way. Yes, you pay sixty dollars for the Spitfire model, but <laughs> it's it's good enough that I think it's worth it. It's just. I wish they had more World War II airplanes and more World War II scenarios. When, when you go online to play DCS, you'll find that the, at least I used to find, that the World War II arenas were almost uniformly empty. Which is too bad, because uh, 
there's nothing better than playing against other human beings if you ever want to get your ego in check. You start thinking you're good at this game, you go online and you play guys who've been playing it for 10 years and are very, very good, and suddenly you go, oh, okay, reality check. <laughs> I think I'm going to email my friend Steve over at uh, Flight Sim VR Guy and see if he wants to have a friendly duel for charity. We'll pick a couple of charities and see. Let's get slowed down here first. We're kind of on right base for that runway. I'm not sure which way the wind's blowing. I don't want to pull flaps out yet. I will get the gear down. Oops. Oh boy, there's a button hook if I ever saw one. That's not a particularly great way to do this. So we're going to do a little circle here. Gear is down and locked. So we'll just keep... Oh, there's another spitty. We'll just keep coming around until we see the runway. There it is. Apply a little power. You want to keep a little power on, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really discovered the secret to landing these things. Uh, all the tail draggers I flew, as they got slower, uh, they became less likely to want a ground loop on me. But this thing, this thing loves ground looping. Okay, full flaps. I got to get ready to get on the brake right away, which I shouldn't need to do. I should be able to land this without flaps. One bouncy wouncy. Hold the stick back. Oof. Tailwheel first, that's not so good. Working those air brakes, the pneumatic brakes. Trying to keep it from ground looping. <laughs> you gotta, gotta apply the brake and then the rudder pedal to keep it straight. There you go. Well, I mean that was not a beautiful landing, but since we can use the airplane again, I guess i got to call it a good one. Maybe even a great one. By my standards, a great one. By normal pilot standards, <laughs> maybe not quite so much. I love the way you see the radar dome flying, uh, doing circles here. All right, let's cut the mix. And we'll get the airplane shut down. And I'll thank you for joining me. What's my reaction to the latest version of Pimax's firmware and software and its combination with DCS and uh, dynamic foveated rendering and quad views? Well, I'll tell you what. It's impressive. It's just really, really good. I've always liked DCS, and now I like it even more. I think it's a brilliant piece of work, and it looks wonderful in the Pimax crystal. I'm waiting for the Super Crystal to come out. I intend to buy that one. It'll have a little wider field of view, both horizontally and vertically. And it will also, I believe, uh, offer a higher resolution and a greater pixel density. So it should look amazing, especially in Flight Sim 2024. Although I'm probably going to have to update my computer for that. But for DCS, the coders there have made the game much better. Uh, when I first started playing DCS on this machine it was it could be a little bit sluggish but now with quad views and foveated rendering working and the code a little bit better optimized for OpenXR uh, it's brilliant. If you haven't tried DCS I, I highly recommend you do it particularly if you love World War II airplanes because the Spitfire is amazing, the Focke-Wulfs are good, the 109 is good Strangely, I find the 109 easier to land than the Spitfire, which is weird. But anyway, they're all fun to fly. And uh, before you blame the flight model for the tricky flying characteristics, check your joystick. Make sure that you're not holding in a little back pressure, side pressure, or forward pressure when you think you have the joystick centered. Thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who takes the time out of the, their day to watch one of my videos and 
and maybe even hits the like button. Dare I hope for that? How about subscribing? Could I hope for that too? Dare I? Oh yes, I dare hope for that. I indeed I do dare that. <laughs> subscribe, su subscribe if you will, if you want to. There'll be more content like this. I'm also going to do a few more sports car videos because I'm in a sports car club and I have an Austin Healey, which is a brilliant, brilliant car. And uh, so we'll have some more on that and other great cars and great airplanes and VR stuff. And if you like it, subscribe. Join me for more. I appreciate it, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this. I know you didn't have to, and sometimes that can be a bit tedious. So <laughs> thanks for your tolerance, and have a great day.